copy. Copier. I don't know if you've had your coffee and correct grammar yet today, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. Today, I'm going to do a little mini class on contract, specifically to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contract. This may be applied to any type of contract because as Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller used to say, everything is contract and that is correct and true. I think people get a misconception about correct sentence structure contract in that it behaves the same way as a fiction contract because it doesn't. It's not the same domain and it doesn't have the same facets. It's actually, it's similar, but is not the same performance wise. It's a whole nother level, a geometric level playing field actually of contract terms and conveyances. When I started out learning this grammar in 2017, my goal was number one, of course, to master the grammar. Another goal was to write contract with it. I wanted to write correct sentence structure contract. I wanted to learn how to do that. And the third was I wanted to be able to teach it. And, you know, of course, and use it in a practical manner. So I achieved all of those goals and more. And I do it, I did it through perseverance. And it took me hmm, about a thousand hours of learning before I could, I even used it in 2017 to file my first uh, document contract postal vessel court venue. And since then, you know, as David Windmiller was fond of saying that he had, you know, 80 some thousand hours of, of study and performance. And the reason why he had so many hours is because he didn't sleep. Like he, he didn't have to sleep like normal people. So he was able to go for 24 hours at a shot again and again and again, 365 days a year. I don't have that luxury. However, I have probably about 20,000 hours of study and performance since the beginning of the summer of 2017. I've been teaching it, teaching it since February of 2018. And, you know, it's about five years of teaching people all over the earth, hundreds of people, hundreds, all different cultures, creeds, races, different types. And uh, so I, I have pretty much experience in this because it's all I have been doing for the past five years. And I've written hundreds and hundreds of contracts using it. So I do have my own way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over in a general sense how a contract and correct sentence structure would be crafted, authorized, and created if that's what you choose to do. Now, these are all taking for granted that, number one, you know the grammar already, all right? You know the rules of the grammar. You know how to use it. You know how to position your facts with correctness. That's a given, okay? You also have to know the postal mechanics. You also have to know the flag mechanics, closure on the flag, what that means, and how to have standing, so on and so forth, using that Title IV flag. And I don't mean giving someone else authorization. I'm talking about you are the authority. Not that you authorize, not that you were the author of the flag, because quite frankly, I don't know who the author of that particular flag is. I just know I authorize its use to represent the land during the time of the contract, the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, domain. And I've been 100% successful with it over the last five years. So in any case, we're taking that for granted, that you already know how to use the grammar. That's how I'm speaking about this. Hopefully it will inspire people to, you know, 
get off the porch and run with the big dogs and learn the grammar. Hopefully. I mean, I'm definitely not pushing people to do that. I'm more trying to inspire people or motivate people who may be on the fence to actually get up and do something about it. And it all comes down to those three principles that I'm always talking about. Rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, and honor and grace. Those things, those elements, those ingredients must be included in your contracts. That's how correct sentence structure contracts work. In a correct sentence structure contract, it would not be created to force someone to do something against their will. Because if it is, then that's malicious intent. That's an act of war, an act of war. And it's a trespass, so it's not going to work. That's not how this works. Correct sentence structure, again, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal. Now, if you're using it to create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel court venue to stop a trespass, then and only then is the force being used correct, meaning you're forcing someone to stop trespassing, to stop harming you. That's the only time that the force is successful. I feel like I'm talking about Star Wars or something here. But but it that's my experience. And as I said at the beginning, I'm sharing with you my experience of writing contract and how these things work. Now, if you're writing a joint contract, meaning there's two or more contract parties coming together to co-authorize a contract, then, you know, for, for the benefit of all, everyone involved would, in the best of all worlds, have about the same knowledge of the grammar. But that's not always the case. And it's not always necessary that everyone has the same level of knowledge of the grammar, as long as everyone has complete cognition and closure as to what the terms and conditions are of the contract are. Did you hear that? The best example I can give is the claim of the live life. When I authorized claims of the live life for my children, they didn't have knowledge of the grammar, but they understood what the contract was. I explained it to them. And if ever there came a time in the now space where we had to utilize that instrument, I would have taken authority over it and I would have performed on their behalf as postmaster, bank banker, federal judge, and whatever else of that contract, however you want to say it. I use the term document contract court authority. I do have a contract for that, a correct contract. So in any case, so you have some people coming together to authorize a correct sentence structure contract, all equal contract parties, because it's a geometric level playing field of contract. You would create your terms and conditions, meaning all of your facts would have closure. You would include a dictionary with those facts and also all your positionals and lodials would have closure. Why they're there, why you're using them. One word, one meaning, one congruency, one function. All the symbols would have closure. You would include that in your diction, your contract dictionary and contract thesaurus. All of these things would be included so that there's nothing left to assume or question. Unlike fiction contracts. Now you can contract into fiction uh, with honor and grace. You can, because I mean, we're surrounded by it. We were brought up with it. It's not going to go away. It's probably never going to go away. The only reason why this correct sentence structure exists is because people who maliciously use the fiction babble to take advantage of others. 
that's in my opinion, but I mean, it makes sense, logical sense to me that that's why it was created. So that there's no wiggle room, there's no wordplay, there's no games. The contract is what it is. So in the fiction, like for example, if you agree, if you want to be on a social media platform like Facebook, okay, they have a big long list of terms and conditions that you scroll through, right? Who reads it? I don't know very many people who do. As a matter of fact, I don't even know one person who does besides myself. You scroll through, and then at the bottom, there's a little box that says, click agree if you agree to the terms and conditions and to the privacy policy. So if you don't read it and you click agree, and then now you, you, you're you permitted to use Facebook, what has just happened there? When you click the agree button, here's Facebook, here's you. You click the agree button, now you can get on board the vessel known as Facebook, and Facebook's going to you're going to be on board Facebook's vessel. It's not your vessel. It's Facebook's vessel. So at any time, as I'm sure there's a sentence still in there that says, any time these terms and conditions are subject to change at their whim, at any time, you agree. So you can't get mad at them if they block something you post. Or if you think that they're filtering certain things, or if you think that Facebook has a certain bias, you can't get mad at them. You agreed to it. You're in their house. It's the same thing if someone would come to your house and start doing things that you didn't agree with inside your own house. What would you do? Would you just let them do whatever and wreck your house? Or would you kick them out of your house? It's the same thing with Facebook. It's a private thing. It's actually, I think in 2012, it became a public company, but it still navigates as a private company. So keep that in mind. That is a contract, even though it's sort of, it's a unilateral contract, meaning they're offering something and it's up to you to decide whether you want it or you don't want it. So if you don't want it, then you don't contract with them. Big deal. Who cares? Just know what it is you're doing. Maybe take the time to read the terms and conditions. Like a big one that people talk about are like mortgages and insurance policies uh, that people agree to. Who actually reads all that shit? There's usually only one name on that contract. You put your name on it or you check the agree and initial it, but you don't read it. So after you agreed with it, then what happens? Maybe a year or two or three or four or five years later, you discover correct sentence structure. And then you're like, oh, they tricked me. They tricked me into this mortgage or this insurance. And then you try and use a correct sentence structure to get out of it. Think about that from a logical perspective. You didn't read the contract. You chose not to understand it. And you agreed to it. Just throwing that out there. Everybody has to take accountability for what they're doing and their contracts. That's what correct sentence structure is. You have to take full accountability for what you're doing. Full closure for what it is you're doing. The contract that you're authorizing. You as the author. Authorization just simply means that you authored something. And in this case, it's writing a contract or, or typing a contract. So it's kind of the way I do things, you know, in the confidential. If someone wants a certain service for me or whatever, I write up a contract and it's up to them whether they agree to it or not. They're in my house. They come to me to ask me for something. I didn't twist their arm to come to me. I didn't coerce anyone to come to me. So they must necessarily agree with my terms and conditions. Or we just don't contract. That's how it works. You can't force someone to do something against their will. That's fiction shit. Fiction does that. That's bully behavior. Do you want to be a bully? That's not what contract's about. So, so far I've covered uh, a joint contract where more than one contract party, everybody is on equal uh, playing field. They're all authors of the contract. They all understand and cognize the contract and then they perform on it. Right. So then the other contract and kind of contract, which is the one I just mentioned, and it's actually the most common one that I can think of, is the one where someone is offering something 
and someone wants something, like someone wants something from someone else. So, for example, if I'm offering, uh, I'm a grammar tutor. That's my public claim. I claim to teach correct sentence structure. And then you come to me to ask me to teach you. You're requesting that. So that would involve a contract, which I would write up. And it would be up to you whether you agree with the contract or not. Because if you don't agree with it, well, then we're not going to contract. It's that simple. No one's twisting your arm. It's the same thing if I want something from something, from, from somewhere. Um, if I go down to, to my favorite um, farmer's market and I want to buy some, some corn or some vegetables or something, um, I choose the vegetables that I want. There are values attached to those vegetables. And then I give the, the, the owner of the vegetables the value, and then I get the vegetables, and he gets the value, rule one, rule equal. I'm not going to sit there and, and say, well, this piece of corn's a dollar. Do you, would you take 25 cents for it? I mean, what kind of insulting shit is that? I mean, if you see that something's overpriced, well, then it's overpriced. But some people will pay that. It depends. The worth of something is what you ascribe to it personally. It is. And so what happens is, and this is what I think is happening in the crypto domain, what's going to happen is that, and this is the difference between the correct sentence structure and the fiction. In the crypto domain, you have these people doing these things that are called rug pulls. People are ripping people off now of course the crypto market everyone always says it's caveat emptor buyer beware this is not to be construed as financial advice or whatever i'm not a financial advisor this is for educational entertainment purposes only this is at your own risk but still people just like going to the casino, will take, you know, $10 that they can't afford to lose and throw it into crypto and then lose it. Now they're mad. Even though they knew the risks, now they're mad because they got ripped off. They didn't do enough vetting. They didn't know about what they were doing. So they get ripped off. What recourse do they have? What do they go to? The Better Business Bureau? So what does this show? This shows that private confidential individuals are not mature enough or knowledgeable enough to contract amongst themselves. Now they have to go outside to another party, a referee to come in, the Better Business Bureau or whomever to come in and, oh, that person took my 10 bucks. So now you bring in the government or some other entity and now you get it regulated. Why? Yeah, sure. It's not only because of the ripoff artists out there, but it's also because of people's unwillingness to do their own study and research before they get involved. They willingly go in knowing they don't know what they're doing and then they get ripped off and then they get mad about it when they're the ones that did it. Do you see what I'm saying? That is why it's so important to understand all aspects of a contract, that all aspects of the contract are understood by all the contract parties involved. I always say with people that I'm contracting with, if I send a contract to them, it's in correct sentence structure. It's translated into plain English. If you have any questions, ask me. I will answer them. The closure's there. Everything you need to know is right there in front of you. And if there's something that I've forgotten or that isn't there or that you don't understand, contact me. I will give you the closure. There's no room for misunderstanding. And because of that, I have never had a problem, ever. Well, I guess that's not true. I had one problem. And that was because the individual that I was dealing with, I later found out um, with my perception was not altogether here cognitively. But it was easily fixable anyways. 
and I fixed it and it went away. As long as you stay within those principles of rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality. So I've explained a lot of uh, principles and things, general generalities about contract. The difference between correct sentence structure and the fiction is that correct sentence structure, number one, has full closure on every single thing that's on the contract. The fiction doesn't. Number two, the correct sentence structure contract goes by those principles of rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, honor, and grace. You have to understand what it is that's in the contract. Now, it is contingent upon me as a contract author to make sure that the other contract party is cognizant of everything on the contract and they understand it enough to say, yes, I agree. Yes, I'm in joinder with that. It is not up to me to force that person to tell me that they understand the contract when they really don't. Now, if I can see it in their eye while I'm talking to them in a consultation, I can see they don't understand it. I'll be able to pick up on that. And I'll be like, you know, are you sure? Is there something else you want me to say? But if you hide it and you say you understand when you don't, that's not my fault. You're choosing to do that. And that always comes out too as well. Everything, <laughs> everything that's in the dark comes into the light. What each contract party is responsible and accountable for is their own actions and their own behavior. They're not accountable for the other contract party's actions or behavior. That's another thing that people seem to uh, misunderstand or choose to not understand, perhaps. And you get these people telling people what they should or shouldn't do. Like, um, and I brought this up before, like that what's it called media command letter that was brought out a couple years ago goofiest thing i've ever seen number one the grammar was horrendous i think i put this on my community section where i've shown some of the mistakes in the grammar but the whole idea of sending a letter in a grammar that the recipient probably doesn't understand and then expecting them to follow commands from someone they don't even know regarding their own jobs. I mean, think about that. Say you have a job doing something, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're go to work, get a paycheck, keeping a roof over your head, feeding your family, kids are going to school, everything's okay, making car payments, whatever it is you're doing, paying the bills. And then all of a sudden, some jackass sends you a letter in a grammar that you don't even understand. You're like, what is this? Russell who? Command what? They're telling me how to do my job? What? <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Think about it. Put yourself in those shoes, maybe. It's called empathy, folks. That's why that stuff didn't work and won't work ever. The only way it could possibly work is if you made somebody probably afraid enough to follow what it is you're, you're trying to do. And that's another big tactic of the fiction, fear. And fear comes from what? The unknown. So if you're afraid that you don't know this, that, or the third, well, then you're more likely to agree with whatever's being put on the table. You're more likely to agree, oh, maybe I should pay 150 or 200 bucks for a live life claim. Maybe I got to have this guy's thumbprint because I don't understand it and I'm scared. You know, that's a completely human reaction to something with the way, you know, my perception that we've been programmed through the school system uh, to be authoritarian followers. Can't think for ourselves. Rather have someone else do it for us, especially if we don't understand something. That's not what this grammar is about, ladies and gentlemen. This grammar is about becoming autonomous, having the guts and the intestinal fortitude and the educated formatory apparatus, the necessary neurological pathways to use this stuff on your own, as your own authority to write your own contracts or 
to be a steward of those fiction contracts that you've chosen to take part in. Because it's unavoidable. There is not one person out there <laughs> who is not contrasting with the fiction right now. If there is, name them. Put it in the chat. I triple dog dare you. Won't be able to find one. Because that's the world we live in. But thankfully, there's this technology. And you can use this technology not only to write your own contracts, to be a steward of your own biosphere, and also to be a salvager of those fiction contracts uh, that you choose to take part in so that you now are a co-authority of those contracts using the claim of the live life or CPAS C treaty, favorite volition claim, uh, whatever claims you've written in correct sentence structure, definitely can use those things to your advantage in a peaceful, neutral, honorable, graceful, rule one, rule equal manner. So again, the most important thing for a correct sentence structure contract is closure, meaning giving meanings to all the terms and conditions, hieroglyphs, facts, Spacing, flag, postal mechanics, 12B7 through 12B1, all that stuff. Yes, making sure the other contract party has every opportunity to understand, to cognize what it is you're sending to them. If you're using correct sentence structure, yes, you would have to do that. Well, I'm not telling you what you have to do. What I'm saying is, from my experience, when I began using honor and grace with these contracts, meaning when I began translating my correct sentence structure into fiction babble, I got much better results. I know quantum syntax grammar is correct forward and backward. However, the contracts, the government, and all the business operating are not compatible with the quantum syntax system. Paul, that works just the way I just said it did. When you learn quantum grammar, when you learn correct sentence structure and get closure on it, then you can either become an author of your own correct sentence structure contracts, and you can also become a steward or a salvager of those fiction contracts that you're mentioning right there. I have contracts with the government because I am a steward of those contracts, I use my C pass C treaty to do that. I work with them to navigate from point A to point B. I have federal documented uh, documents and things like that where I go from point A to point B, I'm peaceful and neutral. They don't have to understand correct sentence structure in order for me to do that because I know correct sentence structure and I'm willing to teach them at any point in time, sit down three, four hours and teach them if they want to know. Or I can just translate it into plain English. This is what I'm doing. As long as they understand what it is I'm doing and they can see I'm not a threat, I'm peaceful, and neutral, I'm not trying to mess their world up. They also understand that I'm not going to let them mess my world up. And so it's a peaceful, neutral, correct, correct transshipment and conveyance. But first, Paul, the first thing to learn is the grammar. For example, if you had closure on correct sentence structure, you would not be asking you would not be asking that question because you would know the answer because you'd have already done it. You would already know exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know which depending on where you're sitting, not too many people have the wherewithal and the willpower and the gumption to actually sit down and learn this, to actually commit to it, because it is a commitment. It is a commitment to learn this. It's a very harrowing experience, at least from my standpoint. But once you do, you have all the closures you need. So that's my little mini class on contract. Uh, Hope I've conveyed all the points that I set out to convey. 
as you know, Paul brought up that that uh, question right there. If you want to answer that question for yourself, um, I have over 300 videos on this YouTube channel that you can study. And the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge is there. You could quite literally learn this grammar all by yourself using the free videos that I put up on YouTube. So another way you could learn it, which I call as fast tracking, is to email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct grammar workshop where I will personally take the time to be your guide. It would be just like walking into a college classroom or, or whatever. There's a set curriculum. Only the difference is I tailor it to you one-on-one. -on -one. I tailor it to your strengths and I strengthen your weaknesses. And I take you as far as you're motivated to go. What you put into it is what you get out of it. A lot of people don't cognize that, but it is true. I found that to be 100% true. And those people who are not willing to put in the effort or the value to learn this probably won't learn it. They'll just be spinning their wheels in this comment section a year from now, saying the same shit that they're saying now. Uh, you know, I guess that kind of may have came off on a sort of a harsh vibe, but I'm, I'm being blunt because I see it. I have enough experience now, five years of teaching this, five years of being on YouTube and there are literally people on here still spinning their wheels in the comments section that were here three years ago saying the same stuff. Those are the people that haven't been able to pull the trigger to do what they need to do to learn this. But I'm not here to force anybody to do anything. I'm here to teach the people who are serious and want to learn it. So again, reach out to me at my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and see if doing workshops is right for you. And if that's something you want to do and learn the grammar and Get closures to all these questions that you might have about the fiction. Because once you learn the fact, the fiction just kind of becomes a irrelevant little <laughs> thing on your shoulder. Ooh. Paul's doing a no-no using two different types of language in his comment. I'm just kidding, man. Hey, I appreciate you commenting. I appreciate your viewership, and I'll, I'll look for your email. Please make sure to include your correct, your full correct name at the bottom of the email. A lot of people don't think to do that, but I take this very seriously. You know my correct name. You know what I look like. I expect the same consideration for you. So if you write the email, I don't, you know... You can write it adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. It doesn't matter as long as it's clear, concise, and you take authority over your words and put your name at the bottom. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who was here watching. I'm going to go back and uh, edit this and uh, put it out in the mini class playlist. Peace. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember, that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.